A huge Big East showdown tonight in Milwaukee. Senior Lazar Hayward will lead battle-tested Marquette after three consecutive overtime victories in town, the Louisville Cardinals. And their super sophomore, Samardo Samuels, who looks to continue his dominance in the paint, where he's averaging almost 17 a game. Louisville and Marquette fight to stay alive for a bye in next week's conference tournament next. Two teams on the proverbial bubble looking to hit the oh-so-important 20-win mark as Louisville takes on Marquette. Big night in the Big East. Syracuse has already won its first outright Big East regular season crown since 91. Both these teams playing their best basketball of the season. Louisville has won six of its last eight. Marquette first ever to win three consecutive overtime games in college basketball history in one week. Hi everyone, I'm Luke Cadellis alongside of Mike Kelly. We're at the Bradley Center in Milwaukee and Mike, both these teams playing their best basketball of the season, not only playing for next week's Big East tournament, but also the NCAA tournament. I think that's the positive that you said. They're both playing well right now. I know Joe Lenardi doesn't want to say either team is a lock, but I say they're in. I don't think there's anything that either of these teams can do, even if they lose out. But what you're playing for now is seeding. You want to get a better seed. Right now, Louisville looks like a seven. Marquette maybe a nine. You're trying to play your way up. All right, both these teams would not be in this position if it not for a couple of guards. And let's look at, first of all, Louisville's senior, Edgar Sosa. Uh, Edgar Sosa. So much of the Louisville offense runs through Edgar Sosa when he's on the floor. He can get in the lane. Very good at assist, setting his teammates up over four a game, hitting that outside shot. And I think that's what changes the game for Louisville when Edgar Sosa, Jerry Smith, and company can hit those outside shots. We'll be watching Sosa to see if he can get going early. And for Marquette, it's Darius Johnson Odom. The sophomore has been a shifty playmaker for Marquette, able to get inside. He's a lefty. He throws defenses off. And the way this Marquette team plays, all from the perimeter, Darius Johnson Odom is quite the weapon. Yeah, DJO, as they call him fondly here at Marquette, has definitely made his presence felt in this, his first Big East season. Starting lineups, first of all, for the 19 and 10 cards. Couric's going to make his second start of the season. Wapshire opens up for Jennings, giving Coach Patino more of an athletic starting five for the home team. Marquette, 19 and 9 coming in. Darius Johnson Odom had 13 of his 16 in the second half against Seton Hall. Kubian played a career high 44 minutes against the Pirates. Star Watch. Mike Kelly for Louisville. Hey, this game could be decided in the post with this guy, Samardo Samuels. I think it will. We've got some interesting matchups to watch. Samardo Samuels, you see his numbers in the last four games, and Marquette not very big down low. How do they defend him? And then, of course, on the other side, Lazar Hayward, very good from the perimeter. How does Samuels defend on the perimeter? I think we'll see Louisville play quite a bit of zone because of that. Head coach Rick Pitino, the Louisville Cardinals. Ninth season at Louisville, 14 NCAA appearances. Only coach to take three different schools to the Final Four. And there's Buzz Williams. Wow, sporting the blue jacket today. Honor of Al McGuire. Well, student section wearing a little powder blue. Exactly. Everyone wearing the powder blue, and Buzz is fired up. We had a great conversation with Buzz Williams about an hour and a half ago. We'll talk about it throughout the broadcast. Student section out in full force. Al McGuire night here at the Bradley Center. Marquette, Louisville. <laughs> Golden Eagles control the opening tip. We'll be certain to watch the defense that Louisville plays in the half court. Looks like a 2-3. They'll try to match you up out of it. They changed their defense a bit against UConn in their last game. Really changed the course of that game. They got 13 steals in the second half. A victory for Louisville, 78-76 over the Huskies. Butler's shot doesn't go. Marquette attacking right through the middle. Jimmy Butler, a great weapon, along with Lazar Hayward, a couple of big guys that are comfortable facing up to the basket. Sosa looking for room. Finds a wide open Smith in the corner who knocks down the three. That's Jerry Smith. Shoots just 29% from three, but knocks down his 30th of the season. Yeah, Lou, that's a kid that grew up right here in town. And while with Tosa, went to Tosa East High School. He's got a lot of family and friends. And he starts it off right with a made three. About 100 family members here. Marquette gives it up. 
Lou, keep an eye on Samardo Samuels down low. He's being defended by Lazar Hayward. This is a big matchup for both teams. I think the key for Marquette is to try and deny Samuels the ball, not let him catch it. He's so good once he gets that ball down low. Marquette doesn't have the size to body him. Smith again in the corner. Working against Kubian. That time he takes it to the bucket and just muscles one up for two. Tell you what, that's the kind of start that Lou will need it out of Jerry Smith. He's a senior, last chance to come to Milwaukee and play in front of his hometown crowd. What a start for him, five quick points. Smith averages eight and a half a game. DJO to the bucket, throws it up, it goes, and he'll go to the line. And one of the things that Marquette has done so well this year is share the basketball, dribble, penetrate, and then kick for threes. Marquette known as a three-point shooting team, but they don't just pass around the perimeter. And Darius Johnson on the sophomore, one of the reasons they're so good at getting inside, very quick off the dribble. He is such a good player, will step out and shoot the three. 62 threes on the season. We saw him put it on the floor there. Strong upper body, tough to defend, isn't it? Yeah, I'm sure we're going to see Louisville play a lot of zone. I mean, it's just very difficult to match up against Marquette man-on-man. And because they play so small, even the big guys only go about 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, and Butler and Hayward. You got any kind of size down low in Samuels, you just can't have those guys defending on the perimeter. They okay. double Samuels. Yep. Kirk, an open three, and he... A double team, nice job there by Samuels. Kyle Kirk. Louisville's second three so far in the early moments of this game. Smith the other. Very good start on the road for Louisville. decides to play the trigger on the three comes up short Hayward fighting down low against Samuels looked like Samuels had a hold of his jersey and the foul is called on Samuels here's a look at passing out of that double team now Marquette did a nice job of pushing Samuels off the block but the double team came I almost wonder if it was too far away to spring a trap because at that point Samuels is quickly able to look over his shoulder and pass out and Kira getting a second start of the season, knocks down the three, just 29% beyond the arc. But hits one there. A three lead for the Cardinals. After tried the no-look pass down low to Butler, knocked out of bounds. We'll stay at this end. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. 23 on the shot clock. Coach Rick Pitino. And Louisville going for its eighth straight 20-win season. 19 and 10, 10 and 6 in the Big East. They get their hands on so many passes. Tipped another one away there. They had 22 turnovers they forced against UConn. 15 steals, 13 steals in the second half. They just do such a good job of attacking you defensively. They don't sit back. Lazar here, we're trying to work on the inside. Darius Johnson out of takes it to the back, he's just too quick. Put it on the floor again, Sosa and blew right by him. That's a nice job by Darius Johnson. I, I, I just think this zone from Louisville is so good, you can't play around it. You've got to find a way to go through, and Johnson Odom has so far been the guy that's dribbling right into it. Could be on all over Smith. Butler comes out to help. Swapshire throws it into the second row here at the Bradley Center. Take a look at the Big East standings, and we talked about it in the open of the broadcast earlier today. Just actually this evening, Syracuse clinched its first outright Big East regular season crown since 1991. Villanova and West Virginia have already clinched double buys. Louisville and Marquette fighting for that fourth and final double buy into the quarterfinal round of the Big East tournament coming up next week. Nice Smith, there. wide open three, not that time. Swapshire got high, ends up in the hands of Hayward. After pulls up, short jumper. Samuels doubled. And then out of the double team, throws it away. Second turnover for Louisville. Cardinals still off to a nice start. They lead 8-5. DJO coming up with two for Marquette. Louisville's made three of its first five shots. 
to take an 8-5 advantage. We talked about it earlier. Syracuse already won tonight, capturing its first outright Big East regular season crown since 1991. Villanova and West Virginia have already since double buys in the upcoming Big East tournament. Top four teams get buys of the quarterfinals, and we've got Marquette and Louisville battling along with Pitt for that fourth and final spot. I think that's the other thing to note regarding Pittsburgh is they hold the tiebreaker over both Marquette and Louisville. So with two games to play, as long as Pittsburgh wins one of those games, they'll get the double bye. And that is exactly what Mike just said. The remaining for the final bye will go to Pitt, Louisville, or Marquette. Hit the driver's seat. Lou, here's an interesting stat. You take a look at Marquette defensively. They're small, so they struggle on the interior. Opponents shooting 50% of, hitting 50% of their two-point shots, but only 31% of their threes. I think it's important for Louisville to continue to go inside, try to get it to Samuels and use some of that size advantage, then get on the glass, rather than take too many threes. So far, three of their five shots have come from beyond the arc. Another three there for Johnson Odom. He's off to a terrific start. He has all eight Marquette points. The thing you'll notice about Marquette, too, is how many of their shots come off of passes. They, they're a very good team at setting each other up. Not a lot of one-on-one -on -one basketball. Perrick throws up another three. He's got two threes already. Six points. Kierich's a guy that Louisville really looking for him to come out of his shell on the offensive end. He's a very good rebounder, gets to the offensive glass, good defender, but I think offensively they want him to be more assertive. Looks very strong on that three. Played well against UConn on Sunday in 24 minutes at 10 points. Hayward decides to take a three, comes up short, ends up into the hands of Butler. Over to Kubion with the three. Marquette with a couple of opportunities there. 11-8 Louisville. Hey, we got, hey, got pinned on the back. Marquette wanting to bring the double team. Nice job, nice hands by Hayward. So three times we've seen them go into the post to Samuels, and all three times Louisville's turned it over. Well, we did see Samuels get out of it one time. They was able to go cross court for a three, but the last couple times he has turned the ball over. He's a pretty good passer. One of the things he's improved on from his freshman year is passing. Hits the, the three. Right, Acker 48% beyond the arc. Acker about five games into the Big East season was shooting 78% from three. He was shooting better from three than he was from the free throw line. Foul called as they try to defend Samuels. Uh, Marquette, one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country, fifth nationally in percentage, over 40% as a team. You see Darius Johnson Odom hit that three, and again, the collapse of the defense inside to Butler, he's able to kick it out for an easy three for Acker. Foul was called on Butler, his first. We saw what Samuels did on that possession. He's so strong with it, got the foul. Acker comes up with the turnover. Johnson Odom, nice pass down low. False, now double team, tied up by Swapshire. Jump ball, possession arrow in favor of Louisville. Boy, it's a nice play by Swapshire. Just getting his hand on the basketball. You know, he's the guy that kind of fills the stat sheet, Swapshire. He, you know, he does he a little of everything, he doesn't, doesn't he? doesn't do a whole lot that, that jumps right out at you. To, but, but certainly, at the end of the day, I think he's one of those players Rick Pitino can count on for some consistency. You look at his numbers. Tonight was his 19th start of the year, so he comes off the bench plenty. But still, eight points, three rebounds. I mean, six rebounds a game, not bad. He's got some good size. I think defensively, you can play him on a couple different positions. So you've always got that to your advantage when you put him in the lineup. No spins, throws it up. Oh! Hayward pulls down the miss. Oh! Butler in the paint. Rejected by Jennings, but a foul call. Foul's called on Jennings. That's his first. And Butler to the line. Jimmy Butler, I think, easily one of the candidates for most improved player this year. May not get it. I think Ashton Gibbs, maybe the front runner, had a great season. Tim Abramidis at Notre Dame. 
another quality candidate, but Jimmy Butler, what he did last year, just kind of as a role player, and of course they had the big three that, that since graduated. Coming in this year, I don't think anybody saw Butler maybe having this great of a season. I think people knew he was good, but you can never tell until someone gets those extended minutes, and he's really stepped up. Mike, I did the Marquette-Michigan game in Orlando during the Old Spice Classic back in November, and at that time, Coach Buzz Williams told me that he had never seen a player work as hard as Jimmy Butler did this offseason. And you look at the numbers and the improvement from a year ago, a year ago when he averaged just five and a half points and four rebounds a game, ten more points a game right now, you can see why. Acker to the bucket, fouled. So Marquette wasted no time getting it back to the other end of the court, and Acker will go to the line now. Five turnovers, by the way, for Louisville. And I was just about to say, too many turnovers for Louisville. Louisville, they've been very careless with the basketball, just throwing it away a few times. A couple times out of the trap down low, and a couple just careless ones. And another there as they send Acker to the line. Acker leads the team in assists, 3.6 again. This is the free throw there. He's a pretty good free throw shooter as well. 76%. Seeing we'll Buckles into the game for Louisville. Yeah, Buckles and Jennings down low. I was just going to say this Louisville team, much more perimeter dominated when Samuels goes to the bench. I don't think Buckles or Jennings have that offensive arsenal down low to, to just drop it down low against a team like Marquette. I think you have to rely on your guards with this lineup to try to get in the lane, hit some threes, and ask for guys like Buckles and Jennings to get to the glass. For Marquette, we'll see how it changes them defensively. I doubt they'll bring the trap on the low post with those guys in the game. Junior Cadugan into the game now for Marquette. Marquette's some nice minutes come along towards Achilles before the season. Hard to believe he's even playing at this point. He's played in six games. On the floor, nice speed down low, a little too hard for Buckles, and now Marquette has numbers. False alone. Lou, another turnover, just continuing to hurt the Cardinals. Marquette making them pay, taking advantage. Coaches talk about turnovers for touchdowns that's exactly what this was it's not just a turnover Marquette going the other way for the easiest two of the game and Marquette right now on a 7-0 run over the last minute 45 but you know how many of these turnovers I mean sometimes you, you want you have to give credit to the defense and Marquette's been in the right spot but I think a lot of these turnovers have just been sort of careless passes on Louisville's part we talked about what Marquette's been through over the last week no team in college basketball history has gone through what they have with three overtime victories in a row at Cincinnati, St. John's, and Seton Hall. Back on February 13th, they beat South Florida, then lost to Pitt here in this building, 58-51, before they went on their record run. I'm surprised Marquette hasn't gotten more publicity for the kind of season they're having. Buzz Williams done a great job with this group, but they're playing so well. And, and Lou, I was telling you, I'm trying to find a way to say this without it, it sounding bad, because I think Marquette plays harder than just about every opponent that they come up against. I think that's a credit to Buzz Williams, but I watch their games, and you see them getting to the 50-50 balls. They're a small team. They don't have the size, but they make up for it by how fast they play the game, by how they play together, and just frankly, how hard they play. He told his players playing hard is a talent. Playing to the scouting report is a talent, and right now, they are playing as hard as anyone in college basketball. by Louisville, tapped in by Buckles. Well, that all started with Preston Knowles. He comes off the bench. He's just a spark plug for the Cardinals. He gets his hands on balls that you wouldn't even think. I mean, you just see someone being a little bit careless, not, not taking care of it, and Knowles will get it. Preston Knowles, the junior, fourth on the team in scoring, second in assists. Awful nice to bring a guy like that off the bench. Full fadeaway jumper goes inside the line for two. Well, Fulce has really worked on his outside game. He'll even take some threes down again. That's about a 15, 18-footer. 
just another one of those hybrids inside for Marquette. He had 13 against Cincinnati last week, six of eight from the floor. Jennings harassed by Hayward, throws it up, and falls pulls down the miss. Yeah, that's a difference with Samuels on the bench. You go inside to Jennings, not quite as smooth as Samuels would be. Jennings came off the bench tonight. Swapshire started for Louisville. Things Jennings really brings to the table for Louisville is defensively. He can get on the glass and bows a lot of shots at the rim. Johnson Odom scored the first eight points for Marquette. Shot clock now down to seven. Hayward gets it. Thought about it. Shot clock down to four. Fulce shoots. Misses. Take a look at the lineup for Louisville. No, no Samuels, no Sosa, no Jerry Smith. Probably the three best offensive players on their team. Well, Louisville will go 11 deep. 11 players on Louisville average at least 11 minutes a game. Well, Rick Pitino clearly not happy with the production out of those guys, though. Delk's three doesn't go. Knocked out of bounds by the Cardinals, and we have a timeout on the floor. Boy, the action hot and heavy, just as we expected. Two teams turning the Bradley Center into a track meet with full finishing. Kara here at the Bradley Center. Louisville with a tough time holding on to the ball. Six turnovers already. They trail by four, 17-13. Men's college basketball continues here on ESPNU. Wednesday night, action from the ACC. Virginia battles Boston College. Men's college basketball on ESPNU and ESPNU HD. Wednesday at 9 Eastern. There's some of the firepower right there. We'll see how long Rick Pitino goes with those guys on the bench. Surprised they've been on it. For as long as they have together, you know, you, you get those starting guys five tonight. You get those guys some breaks. Sosa on the bench along with Smith, Kurt, Samuels, and Swapshire. It's a line shift. Just got done watching USA Canada hockey, huh? It's <laughs> a good way to look at it. On the floor right now, Bucko, Siva, Knowles. Duncan Jennings. Johnson Odom throws up another three. This guy's been on fire. He had the first eight for Marquette in this game. Four for four from the field. Now he has 11. I'll tell you what, Lou, that was a very interesting defense. That was not a 2-3 zone. They, they showed a 2-3 look and then came out of it, but they struggled to match up. Jennings, the offensive rebound. This is the bunny. Goes right back up with it and comes up with two. Well, that's what Jennings brings. He's a pretty active player down low. He gets after the glass, gives you some putbacks. Big body, 6'10, 240. Marquette looking really good, though. The half court sets. There he shots at home, stepping into his threes, sharing the basketball, getting inside when they need to against this zone. Butler finds Acker. Shot clock down to eight. Wide open Hayward, top of the key for three. Log on to Facebook today, search ESPNU, become a fan, post your best college basketball photos and comments, show us your school pride on ESPNU Facebook. As Hayward comes down with the miss. Question tonight, who will win the Big East Championship? Again, who will win the Big East Championship? Tell us on Facebook.com slash ESPNU. Who will win the Big East Championship, Mike Kelly? Well, that's hard to say. tell you what, though. I know one group of people that's really rooting for Syracuse. The more they win, you know who that is? Lemoyne. <laughs> North Syracuse lost to Lemoyne. Yeah. I mean, everybody on Lemoyne, the biggest Syracuse fan, right? They hope they win a national title. And they can say, we took down the national champs. The Orange rank number one. What a game on Saturday against Villanova. Over 36,000 at the period goal. But Ruby and just harassing those. Nice shovel pass. And Buckles throws it down for two. Boy, that was all Preston Knowles, able to just handle the pressure for a second. There looked like maybe a five-second call. Kubian really working hard, but Knowles able to answer the call. Look at Kubian. He's exhausted after that effort. Well, I'm exhausted just watching him. Acker throws it out of bounds. Comes another line shift from Louisville. Timeout. Marquette leads by 5, 22-17. Thanks to this guy, Darius Johnson Odom, who has 11 of his team's points. 
They're not here to play 40 minutes tonight. They'd rather play 45, and why not? Their Golden Eagles have played their last three games in overtime and won all three. Jimmy Butler with some last-second heroics, first of all against UConn back at the end of January, and then as part of this three-game streak, he did it against St. John's, the winner in overtime. Jimmy Butler, who's had a terrific season, averaging 15 and a half points a game, six and a half rebounds, 10 more points than he did a year ago. Well, I think what you have to remember too about Marquette is you know you watch them win those close games. You got to remember this was a team that was losing close games early on in the season. A tough buzzer beater against West Virginia, lost a close one to Villanova, two two close ones to Villanova as well, and then a, a buzzer beater against the Fall. So Marquette's been on both sides of that court. Hayward whistled for the foul. That's his second. Watch how the Louisville offense changes a bit with their starters back in the lineup. All five guys back in at that timeout. Samuels down low. Kirk's two of two from beyond the arc. Hayward takes a seat with two fouls. Why do you think Coach Patino? It was the turnovers. I, I think he went for that line shift because of the turnovers just not taking care of the basketball and trying to bring a little spark on the offensive end. Offense for Louisville. That's Curick. They get it down low. They tried to get it to Samuels. Went over his head. Swapshire throws it away. Well, what's interesting there, Lou, is we saw Jimmy Butler fronting the post. He was fronting Smarto Samuels inside. Lazar Hayward's on the bench. Instead of playing behind and then waiting for the ball to come in and trap, they tried to deny. Swapshire is actually pretty good at dropping down those high low passes. Just a little too strong on that one. Seven turnovers now for Louisville. Four for Marquette. Johnson Odom has it knocked away. Again, down low, Samuels guarded by Butler. Samuels got his miss, but a foul called first on Fultz. Tell you, what, you don't want to become one dimensional, but I really think, especially with Hayward out of the game and Butler trying to defend Samuels, I think you've got to go inside on every position. At least give him a look. If he passes out, if they bring the double team, that's fine. But just look at the size advantage, and Samuels has it over Butler. I think he can get the shot that, that he wants just about every time. Sosa throws one up, doesn't go. Kurek got high for the rebound and back out to Sosa. Swapshire this time it goes. Three-pointer for Swapshire. Well, this Louisville team averages almost eight threes a game. They will put them up. They don't shoot at the percentage that Marquette does. Not many people do, but they certainly will hit from three. Marquette averages nine threes a game. Acker pulls the trigger. Short. Nobody really around for Marquette for offensive rebound. Bounce pass down low. And Butler called for the foul. But that's it right there. I mean, you go down low. Butler trying to fight from behind. And Samuel's just too good at holding him off. That's a tough guard. With, with Lazar Hayward on the bench, that's a tough position for Jimmy Butler to have to defend Samardo Samuels. Just ask Notre Dame. He had 36 against the Irish earlier this year. Swapshire takes another three, just about the same spot, not that time. Look at Marquette share the ball. They really whip it around the perimeter. Butler right in the middle with the left hand. It goes and he'll go to the line. No offensive foul call. Buzz Williams can't believe the call. That's a big foul. John Butler, who picked up two fouls in the last minute and a half. He lowered his show. That's a tough call. Samuels clearly sliding with him, and I think what got the foul called offensive is the way Butler lowered his shoulder. It'll force Buzz Williams to go deep into his bench. Eric Williams comes off the bench. Last time he played was against the Paul back on February 3rd. We've got Lazar Hayward and Jimmy Butler both with two fouls now. Tell you what, I'm going to say this. If, I think any possession Louisville doesn't go down low into Samuels is a bad possession at this point. Well, let's see. Marquette leads 22-20, just over five minutes left. Marquette's 
really stretched its defense. Furyk for three. At the back iron, Johnson Odom comes out with it. The ball never got inside. It's time. Johnson Odom for three. Again, he nails one. Three three so far. He has 14. How about the patience? This Marquette team playing without Jimmy Butler, without Lazar Hayward, didn't have anything in transition. Set it up, work side top side, side top side, and get the shot they want. Johnson Odom buries them. What an offensive possession for Marquette. They get it down to Samuels. Double team. Full Sand Williams on him. Smith, the floater. Uh uh. Johnson Odom again for three. Swapshire called for the foul, pushing Williams in the back. Marquette playing well without their two big post players who are both on the bench with two fouls. All right, Kara, thanks very much. Here, Louisville has struggled with its shooting 33% from the floor. They've also turned over the basketball seven times, one of the reasons why they trail by five right now. Luke and Ellis and Mike Kelly, and both these teams with plenty to play for. They're playing for a bye into the quarterfinal round of the upcoming Big East tournament next week, and also, big picture, the NCAA tournament as well. I think the double buys are a real long shot for both teams. Now, clearly, they're still in play, but Pitt is in, in the lead. They've got the advantage. They just need to win one more game and they get the double five but I think what you said the NCAA tournament season I think that's the real story here as both teams like I said in the, in the opening Joe Lenardi doesn't say either is a lock I don't see how either team even if they lose out don't make the NCAA tournament but you want to you don't want to just get in you want to get a decent seed as well and both of them that seven to nine range right now a couple big wins down the stretch and this will qualify as a good win on both teams resume what do you look at Cardinals are one in five against top 25 teams this season six and nine against the RPI top 100. What's important to you when you look at a team like Louisville? I, I think the wins, the quality of the wins that you have. They got a big win at Connecticut. That win over Notre Dame was a nice win. Syracuse, I don't think anybody's going to have a better win on a resume than going to Syracuse and beating them. You see a team like that, it's got a, a, those type of wins. You go, how are you going to keep them out over some of the teams we're looking at that are on the bubble? I just, I just don't see it. Good shot at Rick Pitino. Same thing can be said for Marquette. They've got wins over Xavier at UConn, Georgetown. Last three all on the road in the Big East. I just think their resume is so good at this point. I don't know what they could do. We were just talking about Louisville's resume. Coach Rick Pitino, the only coach to take three different schools to the Final Four. There it is, 19 and 10 a record, 10 and 6 in the league. Their RPI right now, 32. And Mike talked about quality wins. Cincinnati, Notre Dame, the win against Syracuse, as you said as well. on the baseline shot in and out buckles comes down with it back up uh -huh. knocked around into the hands of Johnson Odom pretty nice job inside by Marquette trying to defend Samuels without Hayward or Butler they've done a pretty good job of it so so poked it away got it back and threw it up and in uh, Louisville always coming from behind they want to do those back taps uh, even if you get by them the pressure is always there and they get a turnover again they turn to they force teams into 16 turnovers again Straight through three zone. Johnson Odom sheds off his defender. Shot didn't go. Buckles pulls down the miss. Sosa lost his footing in a travel call. Just got a little too deep. Didn't have room to maneuver to the side. He's got a little smile on his face. I'm sure he's frustrated. Three-point lead for Marquette, 25-22, and they've done this with Lazar Hayward and Jimmy Butler, their two best post players, on the bench each with a pair of fouls. We also haven't seen white bikes for Marquette as well. 
He suited up. He didn't make their last trip. He had a little upper respiratory infection, but Marquette playing very short-handed. Kubian for three. Hits it! David Kubian, 38% beyond the arc. His 37th triple of the season, and now it's a six-point lead. Pretty remarkable when you think about it. Marquette playing short-handed the way they have all season long. Just continues to plug different guys in, make shots, make passes, and run their offense and get good looks. Now you talked about it earlier. No team in college basketball plays harder than Marquette. Buckles fouled going to the hoop. It's called on Williams. Lou, you take a look at the last possession. It's Akri inside, finding Kubion from the wing. Kubion been a great story this year. His production up, and there's Hayward on the bench. But I, I really fear, I think, you know, you, you said it, you talked about the fact Marquette plays so hard. And I just think people hear that. I would hear that at home and think, Everybody plays hard. Yes, they do to an extent, but I agree with Buzz Williams when he said playing hard is a talent as much as shooting the basketball is a talent. Some guys are able to push themselves, give you that effort. Other guys just don't want to work that hard, and I think everybody's seen it in all phases that are of their life. All right now, Marquette has got a team made up of guys that have sold out for the program for what Buzz Williams wants, and it's the only reason, the only reason they've been so successful this year is how hard they play. He told his players, not only his players, his assistant coaches at the beginning of the season, you will work harder here than you ever could imagine, and it may not be for you. Acker doing it for the crowd here, though. Another three for Acker. His coaches are still here. A couple of players have left, but the guys that are still wearing the Marquette Golden Eagles uniform playing as well as anyone. Acker to the other end. Lou, you take a look at the lineup Marquette has on the floor right now and tell me that's a team that should be extending the lead against the starters for Louisville. This is the th they, they, they just keep plugging in players and keep going. Nice job here on the trap. Acker out in transition, able to get to the free throw line. The little guy getting the shot off almost the and one, but it's been the story of the year. Just plugging in player after player despite injuries, illnesses, no matter what it is, they keep on going. If you don't bring it, if you're not ready to play, you will just get crushed. Louisville now with nine turnovers for the top teams in men's college. Lacrosse will be in action Saturday afternoon here on ESPNU. It's 11 o'clock Eastern. Duke against Maryland. 1.30 Eastern. Princeton and Johns Hopkins. Men's college lacrosse on ESPNU Saturday. Nine for Acker. And now it's a 10-point Marquette lead. Jimmy Butler and Lazar Hayward went out of the game. It was a two-point lead. They've extended it by eight. And Eric Williams, who came in for both players, on the floor, he has two fouls as well. Williams fronting Samuels. They can't even get the ball down low to Samuels. Buzzworth's going to use a timeout. They use their losing time out of the first half. Ten point lead for Marquette. 25.1 seconds left. There is Johnson. Odom has done it all. 14 points here in the first half. I think what impressed me about Darius Johnson Odom was that right there, driving inside. He started off for Marquette, this offense, with the aggressiveness to get inside. So often you see teams against the zone. They want to play around it from the perimeter, pass the ball. Darius Johnson Odom showed early on the ability to go inside, and then since then, knocking down the outside shots once the ball goes in. I've heard some people say that Darius Johnson Odom may be the best athlete Marquette has seen. Sign. Quickest, fastest, can jump the highest, the energy he brings to the floor. And nice he addition. has surprised some people, hasn't he? I mean, he's, he's taken nice the Big East by storm. He was a first team Juke All American coming in out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Still has three years of eligibility left this year included. Hey, we're going to come back into the game. And Jimmy Butler for this last offensive possession of Marquette. Hayward still scoreless. Butler with three. Louisville going man to man on this possession. Way around, tried to get it down low to Hayward, and Hayward throws it away. 
to the other end. Knowles for three. And that wraps up the first half, but they love what they saw here from the Marquette Golden Eagles. Darius Johnson Odom, 14 of his team's 33 points. 33-23, Marquette leads. Now let's go to Kara Capuano and Adrian Branch at SportsCenter U. Louisville came into the game averaging 78 points a game, held to 23 the first 20 minutes. They trail by 10. Welcome back as we get set to start the second half. Luke Canellis along with Mike Kelly coming in. We said that for Louisville to win this game, they needed to get the ball into the post. Samardo Samuels, it didn't happen. He was a non-factor in the first half. You know, I think you see Marquette and you wonder how are they going to defend a guy like Samardo Samuels? 0 of 2, two turnovers. Other than passing out of the post once for a three, he really wasn't a factor in that first half. And Marquette offensively did it with the man they call Darius Johnson Odom. DJO. And, and you know what it was? It was rhythm shooting. They played against this zone. I thought Marquette did a nice job of passing the ball, sharing it well, and finding guys in rhythm. You watch Acker there. He just steps right in. I mean, that's the easiest shot he's going to take. That's like practice. You know, we're Allen Iverson, we're talking about practice here. This is him just stepping in, and, and this is one shot, but there were many in which Marquette played well against the zone and got the shots they wanted to get. Here's another look at it as Butler inside just kicks it right out, and that's that's an easy three-point shot from Maurice Acker. Johnson Odom had 14 of his team's points, five of seven from the floor, three of four from three. The other positive for Marquette is Lazar Hayward into the game. He did not pick up a third. Jimmy Butler didn't pick up a third. Marquette extended that lead. three in and out still scoreless well yet again though one of those nice easy kickouts is our Hayward able to step right into a three Samuels turns it over could be under the bucket off the glass it goes I've got Samuels down for four turnovers once the ball has gone into the post. And that was the least decisive of the plays he's tried to make down low. It almost looks like his confidence is shaking a bit. Didn't even think about looking to the basket. Just tried to pass out of it. And it was a weak pass at that. It got tipped away. Smith defended by Butler. And Butler has called for his third foul. Go back to the Marquette steal down low. And here's Samuels not even looking at the hoop. Just trying to find Swapshire. Got to be strong with the basketball, but give, again, give credit to Marquette. Kubion able to finish at the other end. Fulce comes in, Butler back to the bench. Played only 13 minutes in the first half because of the two fouls. It's a tough foul for Butler to pick up, 30 feet away from the rim. Just trying to hedge on a screen. Sosa, the wide open three. Acker tracks down the miss. Beginning of the broadcast, our two Star Watch players were Samuels and Hayward. <laughs> I was say, who picked the Star Watch today? I didn't. Are you going to they take got, responsibility for that? They got time to get going. I think I have to, right? <laughs> they got time. Give them time. I was going to put it on the producer. But <laughs> sure, that's what you're my done. partner. I would never do that to you. False doesn't fall. Marquette with another crack at it. They are they are up 12. And you wonder what kind of defensive adjustments Rick Pitino made at the break. The last game against UConn, his team came out, played much better defensively, got 13 steals. Nice block there by Smarto Sanders. Turns it over again. This just doesn't look like he's into it. Disjointed. Right now. Yeah, the, the confidence it just seems to be shaking right now. Ten turnovers and a foul, uh, timeout called by Rick Pitino. Timeout on the floor, 12-point lead for Marquette. Louisville's 
won the last four in this series right now. And they're trailing by 12, 35 23, early moments of the second half. Men's college basketball continues here on ESPNU. Wednesday night, ACC action. Virginia takes on Boston College. Men's college basketball at ESPNU and ESPNU HD Wednesday at 9 o'clock Eastern. Tony Bennett doing a nice job at the Virginia Cavalier program. Yeah, he went really kind of changing the atmosphere on that campus and that program, trying to still a little bit of defense. They had a nice run there in the middle of the season. I think they struggled a little bit lately, but certainly headed in the right direction. Saw Rick Patino working with his guys in the timeout. Wasn't a lot of yelling. It actually looked like a lot more teaching going on. I think it's exactly what's needed right now is a confidence issue going on with Louisville. First and ten, and it goes, and he'll go to the line. So Fulce on the floor now for Butler, who has three fouls. And Curry called for the foul. Yeah, Fulce given some really good minutes, isn't he? He did it in the first half again here in the second with Butler out, just staying active on the glass. This little team was out rebounded 50 to 22 in their last game. Marquette, not the biggest team, but showing you what can get done just by staying active. Fulce got 11 minutes in the first half because Butler had two fouls and Hayward two. Samuels up with it, doesn't go. Nice job by Hayward of not fouling too. He thought about reaching in on Samuels, stayed away. Can't afford to Hayward to pick up a quick third. <laughs> Hayward gets it. Still time on the shot clock. Now it hits 10. Acker down, Hayward throws it up, no. Gets it again. Tried to shove it down low to Falls. Was knocked out of bounds by Swapshire, so Marquette will keep it at this end. And Lou, you see that rebound. It's an offensive rebound by Marquette. Ball just kind of gets tipped away, and I think you watch so many Marquette games, and you see those 50-50 balls that Marquette ends up with. But that's when I talk about you know how, how hard they play and putting themselves in the right position. They get to those 50-50 balls. They're not 50-50 for them. They're 75-25. Acker finds Hayward alone. Hayward thought about it. Back to Acker. And first with two. And as you said, Mike, what a look from Acker. Marquette on a 7 0 run. A little guy just keeps his head up. He goes right into the heart of that zone. Finds the open man, incredible play. After a guy who rejoined the team in late August, had left for more than two months to concentrate on academics, he's back and they are happy. So said Paul for the foul. Now Maurice Acker, not the biggest guy, but inside, just using his great vision. The entire zone watching him. He finds his teammates just running the baseline. Great job by Acker. He leads his team with 102 assists, third in the nation in assist to turnover ratio. First in Big East games. He's done a terrific job, the senior from Hazelcrest, Illinois. Siva all over Hayward. And they call Hayward for the foul, his third. Well, that was a point of emphasis this year. Non-basketball moves. And then Hayward just with an elbow here. That's the one they called. It was late. It was a delayed whistle. It was not that there. It was the first one. It's a good call. You can't do that. That was his point of emphasis this year. Non-basketball move is the terminology they use, and that's exactly what that was. So Hayward to the bench with three fouls. Butler also on the bench with three fouls. 17-point lead. Siva down low, dealt. Ends up on the line, and Louisville turns it over. Buzz Williams is fired up. One of the reasons why his guy's off the bench. Fulce has come through big time. Look at Buzz on the sidelines.
Marquette up 17 right here in the early moments of the second half. And boy, we just saw Buzz Williams. <laughs> think he was a little excited? I think, Lou, you lied. You said Darius Johnson was the best athlete on this team. You lied. Look at this. Look at Buzz. Get up. High knees. Hup. One more. Hup. Get it up. Look. Split leg. <laughs> oh, the cheerleading coach is going to look over and say, hey, coach. Usually on the sideline. Plenty of reason to get excited here tonight. His team has controlled the play against Louisville. Marquette 19 and 9, 10 and 6 in the league, an RPI of 51. Quality wins against Georgetown, Xavier. A couple of bad losses, North Carolina State and DePaul last month, but they are playing their best basketball of the season right now, winning eight of its last nine games. This is what is at stake with Rick Patino's crew. There is one remaining quarterfinal buy for the Big East Tournament coming up next week. Pitt, Louisville, and Marquette still in play for that quarterfinal bye, but as you've said throughout the broadcast, Mike, Pitt right now in the driver's seat. They certainly are. They're playing for seeding, trying to keep the momentum going. Marquette playing well. Louisville playing very well. Is also down the stretch. Up until this game, this has not been a great showing by their offense or defense. Well, they had a big win on Sunday. At UConn, 78-76. Hayward gets it. Gets it down low. Fultz goes up with it. He's fouled, and they call the foul on Buckles. Well, it's a tough pass. I think Hayward even knows. He would he would take it back if he could. He put Fultz in a bad spot. Trying to drop it down there. Fultz able to corral it. Don't get to the free throw line. Hayward trying to do something offensively. He's still... Hasn't scored in this game. 0 for 5 from the floor. Yeah, but you watch his body language. Does it look like it bothers him at all? We saw him in the first half. He was he was leading the cheers on the sideline at the towel waving. In the oh. second half, just trying to get to be a part of it. Also during the timeout, Mike, they took the foul away from Hayward on the elbow. They called it a turnover instead. So now he still only has two personal fouls. What was the turnover? You just call turnover. It's got to be something. Good for traveling. But See if we can get an explanation. Louisville 0 for 2 here in the second half and four turnovers. No, thought about the three. Buckles top of the key. Loose on the floor, tried to track down his miss, ends up in the hands of Acker. Yeah, not surprised to see Marquette slow down a bit. Some transition, nothing there. Got a comfortable lead right now at home, trying to work some clock and get some good looks. Johnson Odom gets it. Bounce pass down low. False. Back to Johnson Odom. What passing. It's incredible. How do you defend that? Well, it's the recipe for success, this Marquette team. They're sharing the ball so well, shooting it well because they're good passers. 19-point lead for Marquette. Bruno scored 23 points, so we're five minutes in, six minutes into the second half. They average 78 a game. They haven't scored this half. Knows the jumper. They're not even close on their shots. But for a while when Samuels was in the game, he struggled to pass out of the double teams, and then there was a period where Louisville really focused on getting the ball to him, but I think at the risk and at the fault of slowing down their offense. Acker pulls up and hits. Marquette on a 13-0 run to start the second half. Buzz Williams sharing a little smile with Junior Cadugan. Once again, though, you can call that a 50-50 ball. Gets knocked away, but Darius Johnson Odom comes up with it. Inside out passing. Great vision, sharing of the basketball. Marquette playing at home, has the crowd behind him, but still, you can't deny how thin their benches. They haven't had the white bikes at all. He's yet to play in this game. He missed their last game not due to injury, but he was getting good minutes for them. 
You and I talked about how hard this Marquette team works at the beginning of the broadcast, and actually throughout the broadcast, we've peppered the audience about it. You know what? Buzz Williams told us before the game that it started with my start in coaching, and people don't realize that his start actually involves sweeping the floors at a small junior college called Navarro College. He knew he wanted to coach, just didn't know who was going to give him the chance. Walked into Navarro College, into the gym, introduced himself to Coach Lewis Orr 19 years ago, asked him if he could sit at the top of the bleachers, take some notes during practice. Becoming the head coach at Marquette, never believed it would ever lead to this point. He says there's no magic pill. It's all about work, 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 and treating people the right way. Yeah, one of the more unlikely paths you'll see the head coach at a major conference he even joked with us today when he got hired last year the paper the main story in the paper was who is this guy he's still trying to introduce himself and people getting to know his him and his style but i tell you one thing you keep winning the way they are everybody's going to be they're going to get to know buzz williams pretty quick I think Jim Beheim is going to win Coach of the Year in the Big East, maybe even nationally, but Buzz Williams has to be right behind along with Jamie Dixon and the job he's done at Pittsburgh. Foles gets a standing ovation along with after. Kadugan comes back into the game, and I'm with you. I think three of the top coaches this year in college basketball in the Big East, Buzz Williams, Jim Beheim, and don't forget about Jamie Dixon, Jamie Dixon what he's done no with Pitt. Bell takes the three and hits it right at the buzzer. First points scored by Louisville here in the second half. Well, we'll see if that can be the start of something. Their offense has just not looked in sync. Credit Marquette's defense for taking out of what they want to do. Hayward tried to go behind the back to Butler. Knocked out of bounds. We'll stay with Marquette. 16 on the shot clock. You know, I think that's that's the one thing that you guard against. And Hayward was kind of a, a silly pass. He made that pass throughout the season. I've seen him do it several times, but that was too far away and a tough pass to get through. And you got a 20-point lead. You've got 12 and a half to play. I think the focus for Marquette has to be on staying strong, staying true to their principles, riding out this victory. Hayward saves it into the hands of Johnson Odom. Pulls, gets it down low, and the shot clock ran out. Kadugan comes back. Acker takes a seat. We're looking for Edgar Sosa to maybe get a little more involved in this game offensively. He's been pretty quiet. A quiet first half, only two points. As you said, Marquette can't afford to get too sloppy here because Louisville's a squad that can score points in bunches. We well, you know they're going to take a lot of threes. Just hit one by Dell. Sosa certainly can catch fire. Mara on the floor, and he knocks down the three. So now two threes for Louisville. And Mara's their zone buster. He's in the game trying to give him a spark. Kadugan tied up. Turned over by Marquette. Sosa to the other end off the glass. Eight quick points for Louisville after they had gone scoreless for almost seven minutes here in the second half. And couldn't you kind of sense it from our kids? Just, it, it, it's hard just to play at the level they were playing, but the last minute, starting to throw the ball away a, a little bit, getting a little careless, came back to cost you. Eight quick points by Louisville. All right, if the Big East tournament was to start today, this would be the pairings. First round action, South Florida in the fall, Seton Hall Rutgers, Cincinnati Providence, UConn and St. John's. Notre Dame, Louisville, Georgetown, and Marquette with a bye from the first round. You know, it's interesting right there. And everybody around the conference right now, nobody wants to play UConn. UConn's the team that scares everyone because they've got the talent. They were not playing as a team for a good portion of the season right in the middle. Jim Calhoun, of course, had stepped aside for a little while, but he's back, and that team's playing well. They would be the team that you see matching up against Marquette if they would be able to beat St. John's. All those games on the ESPN family of network. Here it's 46-31, Marquette in front of Louisville. Cardinals 19 and 10, 10 and 6 in the Big East. They won on Sunday against UConn, 78-76. Winners in six of their last eight. Jimmy, move. 
So it's a call for the foul as Hacker fell out of bounds. 15 point game. It took Louisville seven minutes, nine seconds to score here in the second half, but they've scored eight quick points. Still, they trail by 15, 46, 31. We're at the Bradley Center in Milwaukee. Rick Pitino looking on 10th winningest active coach. 571 coaching victories over the course of his 24-year career. Rush really extending for Louisville, trying to force force the action on the defensive end. Johnson Odom splits right through the defense, had the shot blocked by Jennings out of bounds, so it will stay with Marquette. 14 on the shot clock. Boy, Jennings can erase shots on the back end. Great size, great talent. Leads his team with 37 blocks. Kubion. Over to Acker. Shot clock down to six. Acker looking for room, trying to make something happen. Shovels it down low, and Butler is fouled. For Marquette, last few, probably the last couple of minutes now, really using a lot of the shot clock every time down. Trying to work for the good look and use their lead to their advantage. Second foul on Buckles. Butler to the line. 77% free throw shooter on the season. Mario Samuel still on the bench for Louisville. Still has not scored in this game. Butler with five. He's been saddled with three fouls. At this point, you get the feeling that if the Cardinals are going to make a comeback, it's going to be from beyond the arc. It's going to be guys like Mara and Sosa. Smith not on the floor. Samuel scoreless. Hayward scoreless. Sosa down low. Jennings doubled. Johnson Odom, the floater off the glass too hard. They'll keep it here, and the foul is going to be called on Hayward. And for Hayward, that is his third. Now, the explanation I got, because remember, we thought that Hayward had committed his third foul earlier. Then we came back from the timeout. They had changed the call to a turnover. Sosa's fadeaway jumper goes inside the line. And we were told that it was because he didn't make contact on his non-basketball move. That's, That's right. why it was not a foul. No contact. It's, it's a turnover, but not a foul. Johnson Odom for three. Uh-uh. Yeah, all of a sudden, you watch the Cardinals, and they seem to be moving a little bit quicker with a little more sense of urgency and purpose on the offensive end. Jennings wanted it. He got it. Back up top, Sosa for three. And Sosa's hot. You can see it, though, can't you? I mean, this is a team that didn't have a lot of life in the first half and a good portion of this second half. All of a sudden, though, they're scoring. They've got a little fire. Rick Pitino getting into his guys. Deficit down to 12. Shot by Jennings down low. Double team doesn't come on that possession, but just a little slide over from Sosa allows them to hit the three. Sosa, a good shooter from the outside. 45% from the floor. Had the driving layup with seven seconds left Sunday to beat UConn. I think with the big East standings. standings yeah. Syracuse has already clinched its first outright Big East title since 1991. That happened earlier tonight. Going over West Virginia already with a double bye with the tournament. And as you said earlier, Pittsburgh right now with the advantage over Marquette and Louisville for that final double bye spot. And I think the real story, too, in terms of the standings, is NCAA tournament, how many seeds? I think five are for sure lock. I think the two teams we're watching, I would consider locks, although. I know Joe Lenardi doesn't have it that way. I think seven for sure. UConn, I would say, is going to get in, although a little bit of work to do in Notre Dame. So you've got a potential for nine. UConn goes to Notre Dame tomorrow. Butler needs help to get it over the timeline and does. Just made it. Plenty of 
time left. Poked away by Sosa to the other end. Boy, what a play there by Delp. What a tap by to get the putback. Reginald Delp. Marquette led this game by 23 at the 13 minute mark. Now it's down to 10. He was the other way. His first two with authority. Well, Terrence Jennings tried to time that block. I don't think he had any clue how quick was Lazar Hayward was going to get up and throw it down. Buckles too hard. Jennings comes down with it and flushes it with two hands. Well, it's a different Louisville team we've seen the last few minutes. Playing with energy, getting in the passing lanes. the ball the low block. He's got Jennings defending him. Little play man to man. Kubian all the way to the bucket. Butler. Butler with seven. Back to 12. Yeah. Offensive foul called on Sosa. For Sosa, that's his fourth foul. It's one of the first stops in a while for Marquette. He will step in, get this charge call as Sosa just forced it. Dangerous play by Jimmy Butler, also in foul trouble, stepping in. Well, it looked like Butler was going back before the contact came. Sold it to the ref. Rick Patino will keep Sosa on the floor with four fouls. I don't think it's a bad idea, actually. I think the one thing you have to count on Sosa knowing what to do is to not get a ticky tack foul on the defensive end, just reaching in. That's what you can't afford. Butler gets it to Hayward. Hayward to the bucket. The floater, no. Follows, yes! You don't think of Marquette as an offensive rebounding team. Last four points to be on offensive rebound. Defended by Butler. Jennings, turnaround jumper. Butler pulls down the miss. Well, with Samuels on the bench, that's normally a play that would go to him. Jennings doing what he can. He's, he's been a nice addition to this team. He's been very active and giving him some things, but it's not his bread and butter like it is for Samuels. Hayward backing his way in. Working against them. The fadeaway, no. Sosa pulls up inside the line, in and out. Under seven to go. Smarto Samuel sitting at the scores table, ready to check in on the next dead ball. Acker pulls up, it goes. They're going to go to the scorer's table and look at the replay. Boy, just the like officials that. not sure if it was a three or two. A little just like that, a quick 7-0 run by Marquette. Taking some of the life out of their comeback attempt by Louisville. 57-40, Marquette leads. Looks like Acker's right foot, on foot the line, yep. was on the line. It's a two. Timeout, 646 left, 5640. Marquette in front, and they are dancing at the Bradley Center. Marquette's going for its fifth straight 20 win season. Up 16 on Louisville, 5640. Four of the top teams in men's college lacrosse will be in action Saturday afternoon here on ESPNU. It's called the Conica Minolta Face-Off Classic, 11 o'clock Eastern. Duke takes out Maryland, and at 1.30 Eastern, it's Princeton and Johns Hopkins. Men's college lacrosse on ESPNU Saturday. 
Lou Marquette was six of 13 in the first half from beyond the arc, 46 percent from three. If you were looking at three in the second half, Frank, oh, you were more lacrosse. Uh, no, but there's Syracuse. But I tell you what, I know where I can watch it. There's Syracuse. What aren't they good at, huh? There they are at the top of the list again, the number one team in college basketball. The all-time leader in NCAA lacrosse titles with 11. John Hopkins, second with nine. Got our buddy Quinn Kesnick's going to be on the call. He's Mr. Lacrosse. He's got that all locked up. On ESPNU, yes, he is. He is the man. My name is Luke Cadellis. Mike Kelly's alongside from the defensive standout at the University of Wisconsin. Great defense from Marquette so far. They've held Louisville to 40 points. Cardinals average 78 a game. Their season low, 55 and a loss to St. John's back on February 11th. Well, now that Louisville's playing man-to-man, -man, we'll have to watch as Swap's trying to defend Butler. Samuel's trying to defend Hayward out in the perimeter. Here it is. Hayward's fouled by Samuels. And that's why Rick Pitino did not want to play man-to-man. -man. He had to come out of it because the zone just was not effective. But you go man-to-man, -man, now you give Marquette the advantage with their smaller post players to go outside. You have to defend them there. And Rick Pitino, you see, just struggling for answers. Hayward to the line, 83% free throw shooter. If you think about Louisville last year, they had Terrence Williams, great year. Terrence Williams, Earl Clark, Andre McGee, all great defenders. I think McGee was a special defender on the perimeter. Terrence Williams great on the wings with his size and advantage. And I think that's what everybody knew this team was going to struggle defensively. Rick Pitino saying maybe it's the worst defensive team he's had since he's been at Louisville. And that's been the difference for this group is whether or not they can bring that defense, whether or not they're going to knock down shots because you, you kind of know that they may have periods where they're going to struggle defensively. So can they outscore people? Now, you mentioned how high their average is scoring per game. Tonight, though, just struggle. Marquette defense came to play, and because they weren't hitting those shots, they dug themselves a deep hole. And it's tough when you lose not one, but two NBA draft lottery players no in Clark and Williams. And, I, and Andre McGee was, uh, I think, an unsung hero. Swap shot of the pocket, too hard off the glass, and Butler pulls down the miss. Siva almost came up with the steal, goes out of bounds. We'll stay with Marquette. And yeah, no need to be throwing that long pass. Buzz Williams looking at Jimmy Butler and saying, we don't need that right now. I think we can take our time kind of up the court, he thinks. Butler amongst the Big East leaders in points per game, rebounds per game, field goal percentage, free throw percentage. He's been great all year long. Okay, word against Samuel. Backs his way in. Finds Butler. Butler to the hook. So now the two post players, the big fellas, the six foot six inch guys from Marquette, becoming very active with the basketball. He took the words right out of my mouth. That's, those are the two matchups, and they went back to back. First, it was Hayward trying to work on Samuels, didn't get it, kicked it out, and it was Butler working on Swapshire. And once again, Marquette back to the line because of those mismatches when Louisville has to play man to man. Boy, it's a real treat to watch just how much Butler has come along from a year ago. There's a couple of different guys in this market team. Jimmy Butler's one. I think he's a candidate for most improved player. And David Kubion, another great story in this market team. Tell you what, it was just a year ago. David Kubion was sort of lost in the roster. Now they had some good players in front of him, but even when he had his minutes, he did not play with the confidence. He even had at one point a sit-down meeting with Buzz Williams, sort of about what was expected of him, and talk about a guy working during the summer and answering the call the next year when he has the opportunity. Smith three doesn't go. Knocked out by Johnson Odom to the other end. How many times have we seen Marquette just chase down the ball a little bit quicker? Use those guards. Darius Johnson, Odom, one of them, able to get his hand on it, poke it away, out in transition. Here's another look. Long shot, long rebound. And the quicker guy coming through is Darius Johnson, Odom. Almost looked like a running back breaking Busted into the, the open <laughs> field. He's built like a running back. Says the Bears fan, you might need a running back, huh? We could use a backup <laughs> right now. Yes, we could. Yeah, Johnson has got some work to do. That's what I love about yeah, Marquette first. That's what I love about you Wisconsin guys. Just rubbing in after <laughs> a rough season. <laughs> Johnson out and misses the second. <laughs> 20 
point game. It was 23 for Marquette. Then Louisville cut the deficit to 10. Now it's back to 20. Samuels finds Swapshire. Samuels goes up with it. Stripped away by Hayward. And Hayward bringing it tonight. Well, Marquette really working on the defensive end. That was a pretty good possession. In fact, I actually thought Louisville had a good offensive possession just in terms of bump movement. I thought they got it inside, outside a couple different times, but give credit to Marquette Lazar. Hayward getting his hand on the ball. Boy, I wish we could have gotten a shot at Hayward. I don't know if you saw that, but after he stripped it away, he looked at the crowd, and he was full of emotion. I'll tell you what, you want to stump some people around Big East Conference right now. Ask him who should be the defensive player of the year. There's no clear cut candidate. Hashim Thabit, the last couple of years, has been an unanimous choice. He's two time national defensive player of the year. And the reason I bring that up is because I think Lazar Hayward is a candidate. I don't know if he'll win it, but he's the league leader in conference games in steals. He's got more steals than anybody in conference play. He draws a lot of charges at his size, always defending a bigger man. I think he's got to be one of the candidates. You know who I would give it to is Andy Routen. Syracuse number one in the nation because of their 2 3 zone and how much better it is. Routens is their best defender and he really creates havoc on the top of that zone. Mark had 16 of 20 from the free throw line. Louisville with just two free throw attempts. Wow, coming into this game, too, you almost thought Louisville would dump it down to Samuels. Try to get Marquette in some foul trouble. They were in foul trouble, but never able to get to the free throw line, mostly because Samuels has been ineffective. Just not as aggressive as Marquette. On this night. And the crowd appreciative of the effort from their Golden Eagles. Well, they ought to be. This team has played so hard all season long. Acker pulls up. No. Tapped around. No. You're right. They have played hard all season long, Mike. Picked in the preseason to finish 12th in the Big East. Hey, with the key for Louisville's going to be is trying to answer the call after this game. They've got to close out Freedom Hall, the last game in Freedom Hall against number one team in the country, Syracuse. After 54 years, they will close down Freedom Hall as Swapshire hits the jumper. There's going to be a lot of hoopla surrounding that game, but I think they beat Syracuse back on February 14th, 66-60. The real key is... Louisville's got to bounce back and, and find themselves a little bit. They didn't play with confidence in today's game at all. How much do you think that, that was a factor of playing a, an emotional game on Sunday, a victory 78-76 over UConn? Had to play a certain part, certainly. It's been all Marquette tonight. Louisville down 20 to the Golden Eagles. Louisville trails by 20, 62-42. Cardinals shooting only 34% from the floor. Luke Cadellis, Mike Kelly, Selection Sunday, a week from Sunday. Are you ready to play blind resume? I am ready to play a flawless record, but I've only played it one time wow. this year so far. I am impressed. Here's why I'm putting my uh, undefeated record on the line here. Strength of schedule six, RPI. I go with the team on the left. Record versus top 25, four and three. To me, quality wins should be emphasized more because what I want to know is, can a team beat some of the best teams in the country? Four and three versus one and five, I think that's a determining factor for me. My guess is that Louisville was that second blind resume that we just saw. Well, I know sometimes both struggled. can get, sometimes both can get in, but if I had to pick just one of those teams, I'm picking the team on the left. Are you ready for the answer? I'm ready. All right, let's show the answer. I was right about Louisville. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. State. Well, big win against Kansas. Certainly looks good. Louisville with a win against Syracuse. at Syracuse. Both teams in. I like that. Do you think Louisville will get in if they, and looks like they'll lose tonight, but if they lose to Syracuse as well? I do. I think I think the With resume, 19 wins you put them in. Yeah, I, I, I do they need they, to win. Do they need to win a game in the Big East tournament? Would it be nice? Sure. Do I think they would get in if they lost to Syracuse and in the first round? Yeah, I really think they do. I, I just think their wins. They've got enough quality wins on their resume. 
that they should get in. The win at Connecticut, their last game, the Notre Dame win. You look at some of their losses back in earlier in the season, there were some injuries involved there with Knowles and Sosa and Smith didn't play in some of those games. So you can explain those to the tournament committee, but they don't have any bad losses and they've got some good wins. Samuels with his first two just a moment ago. If Louisville does get in, it would be their 35th NCAA tournament appearance. Only Kentucky, UCLA, oh. North Carolina, and Kansas have more. You know, one of the keys is going to be like the Horizon League and other leagues that are one-bid leagues. Got a team that will make it as an at-large if whether or not they win their conference tournament. Stealing some bids from the bubble. That bubble starts to shrink, then you get a little nervous. But I'm in agreement with you. I could see nine teams from the Big East getting into the NCAA tournament. I believe nine teams deserve to go. I think Notre Dame has to beat UConn tomorrow. I think UConn can get in even if they lose at Notre Dame. I don't know that Notre Dame can get in if they lose at home tomorrow to UConn. Johnson Odom knocks down the three, and he's the guy that got Marquette off to a great start. Had the first eight points for the Golden Eagles in the game. 14 at the break, 20 right now. Nine teams would be a first in the NCAA tournament. No, no conference has ever done that. There have been conferences that have had a greater percentage than nine of 16 would be, but nine would be unprecedented. And, and the big thing it would do is you'd have for the first time three teams from a conference in the same regional. Right now, if you have eight teams from a conference, they have to put two on each side. They have to make sure you can face each other to the Sweet 16. You can't avoid that if you've got nine teams in a conference. Mar There's only four different brackets. Marquette has a big game on Saturday back in this building against Notre Dame. If Notre Dame was to lose against UConn, but come here and beat Marquette, would you put Notre Dame in? Well, you know, a lot of ifs in that scenario. I, that's a tough one to play out. I think it depends on how big the bubble is. Oh, oh wow. With authority! DJ O. And that ties a career high. All right, Buzz Williams is no longer the best athlete on the team. You are right, it is Darius Johnson on him. What a way to send off this crowd. Pretty nice all-around effort from Marquette. Well-deserved victory. They came out in the start of this game ready to play. They are on their feet here at the Bradley Center, and for good reason. Their Golden Eagles were terrific tonight. These are the updated standings. Again, Syracuse has won its first outright Big East title since 91. Villanova and West Virginia already have earned double buys. Marquette, Kett stays in the mix with Pitt. They've got a chance. They, they, they've got a chance to get that double buy, if nothing else. So this is a nice victory for Marquette's resume in terms of seeding the NCAA tournament. Marquette wins 69-48. Golden Eagles are now 20 and 9, 11 and 6 in the league. Their fifth 20 win season in a row. For Mike Kelly and our entire ESPN U crew, I'm Luke Canellis. The proceeding has been an exclusive presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Good night from Milwaukee. Now let's send it to Kara Capuano and Adrian Branch in our Sports Center U studio.